Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 405. Uh, each week uh, we uh, meet here to review the uh, questions and an an answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have uh, Tim Kepper. Uh, Tim is CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. He's uh, based in Corby, uh, about 100 miles north of London. Um, he's also a Google product expert um, uh, in the Google My Business uh, community. Masataki Wasa is a Google product expert in the AdSense uh, community. And uh, Masataki is based in London. Uh, he, he lives in the suburb of Wimbledon. And um, he can be uh, found at wasaweb.net, W-A-S-A, W-E-B.net. And um, who, who have I missed? Oh, David. David is a leading internet marketer. He's based in the uh, sunny south of the UK or uh, of uh, what am I supposed to say? Is it the British Isles or is it um, England? The UK. Say the UK. The UK. All right. Anyway, and you can find David at davidrazam.com. If he's built his website yet. Um, uh, all right. Yes. We have um, six questions only tonight. Let's have a look at them. And uh, uh oh. Um, Oh, so, so, something has gone not right. Yeah, something horribly wrong. Uh, this is all I need. Um, let me think, what can I do here? Can you unplug it and plug it back in again? Um. No, I don't think that works. Ah, uh, well, um, uh, while I'm trying to get that done, let's um, open up. Um, do you guys have um, the URL for um, our run list? I have, I have the run list open here. I don't know about the um, other guy. Let me get it on, on the right page. And um, are we learning about descriptions? What's that, mate? Are we learning about descriptions? No, I'm, I'm trying of to... Uh, errors. Yeah, I'm trying, trying to fix these errors. Mm. Okay, let's do this. Um, right, our first uh, question. Um, it's... Um, which uh, check checklist do you guys have before taking on board a client for SEO? It was really well responded to uh, um, in the uh, Dumb SEO Questions uh, community. Um, answers from uh, uh, Christine uh, Shashchinga. Shesh uh, Evan Johns, uh, Richard Hearn, quite a few people um, responding. Yeah, I guess I have three. Um, can I help them? Can they pay me? And can I get on with them? <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, totally. I think in that um, um, can can you get on with them is very important. And uh, what I typically end up looking for listening to when you're having that initial like phone conversation or emails is have they inadvertently taught themselves too much bad SEO advice <laughs> because you because you can end up wasting massive amounts of time and budget trying to explain to them why you've done something on page or etc or on site where they'll be going oh but oh you know this or but that or but and it just uh, you know I've I've had, you know, you, you get this kind of gut feeling and I've had it a few in pretty much, actually, pretty much every client I've fired <laughs> in the sense that I've eventually gone, I know, I'm sorry, just this, uh, you know, it's not working, can't work with you, here's my final invoice, um, is literally because of that. And the faster you can weed that out or um, the faster you can weed that out, or, and figure it out if they're going to be one of these kind of people um, is going to save you a lot of a lot of time and a hot, you know heartache. Yep. I like Richard Hearn's response. Uh, he, his first one is, "Can he bring significant value?" Um, I can't remember what was the other thing you said. Just let me see. Um, can he will they be able to implement? And, um, will he be able to implement? Um, um, and that that is true, isn't it? People have, as you say, Tim, uh, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing, and uh, it's a real pain if. Uh, People um, don't take on board um, what you what you know to be true. Anyway, that's uh, question one wrapped. Um, we're now uh, moving on to number two on our run list, and you'll note that uh, we've got our uh, window flying again. Um, number two on our run list, he, Michael de Ravel de Legendier. Uh, wow, the, 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 that that would be the, about the pronunciation. Uh, it, it's a great that? name. I, uh, you know, D David Rosen just doesn't stack up with that, does it? Well, that's right. Yeah, you go away for a weekend in a bed sit, and, and uh, um, the, 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 you, you you would normally say Lord and Lady Roseanne, wouldn't you? Um, yes. Um. <laughs> King and Queen, Rosen. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, Michael said, uh, the dumb question of the day, he said, does it make a difference or help Google to understand your site if your URL has a hyphen in it? He said, I have a client who just bought the domains of, uh, for example, new-shows.com as well as new shoes dot com mm -hmm. um does it make a difference which one we use to build out the site i'd say neither uh, so you know look you're building a brand i would go unhyphenated um you, you're building up a brand and, 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 the, and the point of your domain is, uh, you know, you're obviously trying to get people to, you know, remember it and direct traffic for a brand over time should be, you know, should be your main, you, you know, with if you've done your brand building over time and things like that, people will just type in Nike um, if they want to go Nike. Um, so, you know, typically new shoes, the, you know, the hyphen doesn't matter. But in your early days, when somebody goes, yeah, wasn't it new shoes or something? And 
if they don't put the hyphen in and you haven't bought the other domain, you're going to get this domain doesn't exist. So, you know, I would probably, if you're building a brand, go without the hyphen, uh, unless it's some ridiculously long type of brand name you know, where without the hyphen literally doesn't make sense in this, in, you know, of what the actual name is, or it could be perceived as something weird. Like you do get some names, but when it's unhyphenated and you put them together, the, the two parts of the words make up something a little bit odd. So in those instances, yeah, a hyphen would make sense. It's not going to make a difference, but from my point of view, if I'm building a brand to the very beginning, day one, and, you know, obviously nobody can tell what's going on with business these days, but, you know, if your ultimate game is, aim is to, to you know, make, make a global brand out of it, I would drop the hyphen. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it doesn't matter one way or the other. I think I would go for without the, the hyphen, because that's generally the accepted way. Uh, and you will get someone telling you that you've done the wrong thing if you put a hyphen in it. And if you get fed up with people telling you such things, it's probably best to go without. Yeah. I mean, the new shows or new shoes may be in, in interesting cases because people might... Um, to divide the unhyphenated domain name after news. So there is, I mean, news house. That sounds okay, but news hose might not. So that's something to consider. Yep. Way back when, um, the, the, if, if a domain used a, a hyphen, both Google and the general public would more or less look at it as a, a spam site. Um, I don't know if that's true or not now, but... Um, it certainly was then. Anyway, yeah. no, no, I any, think, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Taki. I think one thing I would add is that, you know, when you have to give the domain name to someone, how would you do it? And having, I think one one reason why you want to avoid hyphen is to, you know, having to say hyphen when you are spelling the domain name out. Because it, it makes it sound longer makes it sound more complicated than it necessarily is. Totally. And customer service would literally have to go, uh, you can find that at, <laughs> yeah, 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 hyphen. And you know what? Some people, like, I was on the phone call the other day doing a site query with uh, someone, and I said, site colon, uh, you know, and they were like, what? <laughs> and I'm literally trying to have to tell them which punctuation mark is a colon. I um, guarantee you there are going to actually be people going, a what? <laughs> a what's a hyphen? Line, small line, the line. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, totally. <laughs> mm. Yep. All right. Let's uh, move on to number three on our run list. This one uh, oh, is from our good friend and colleague, Michael Martinez. Uh, it's a question, how long should it take Google to figure out that the address has changed? Um, I see Michael's asking this question. It's a Google My Business question, and we have just uh, the right person to talk to him. Yeah, so it's a home-based business, but um, I'm guessing that, uh, so with, um, okay, so with the new GMB, with 
with um, a service area business. Uh, in the dashboard, you used to, even though you had marked the service area business, you used to still be able to see the address listed. Uh, with the new service area business, uh, you have to physically clear the address to make it a service area business and select service areas, which means when you log in, you don't actually, in the address section, you don't actually see the address. So, with Michael saying that the default, you know, uh, home base has a very old address, which means this is what should be a service area business, um, actually has the local address listed. So in this instance, um, I would just log in and update uh, in a dashboard, uh, update the address. If the address is not too far away, then Google Will probably won't ask you to re-verify and at that point I would then um, once the address in the back end is updated then I would literally clear that address so you can't actually see it but the address in the back end the hidden end of Google um, it, actually has been updated and verified that the business is there. I, I would certainly do that rather than going in and just clearing the address. Because although Google says it's not visible now, and by clearing it and setting your service areas, your location uh, where you actually, you know, were where you registered it was doesn't doesn't come into or doesn't affect it. But I don't see that and I don't believe that um, from too many edge cases where a business is literally on the border. I'm talking this side of the road is one county, that side of the road is technically another county. And I've seen too many cases where the service area business was registered at that home address as it should be and now it's been cleared. But that's where it was originally registered and that side is this county and that side that's county and you can you know you can literally not be ranking very well in the other county and because you're actually registered in the other county so i mean there's, there's obviously ways around it. so but what i'm saying is i do believe that um they still have that in the back end uh and of course that also explains why some service area businesses get suspended even though they've cleared their address, but because they set it up at a PO box or a UPS or a whatever the case, all these sorts of places against guidelines. So um, I would update the address in the dashboard to the new address, wait, uh, obviously either re-verify it at that address or wait until the system uh, refreshes, then clear the address so that your full service area business um that's the way i would do that now it says there's no chance of receiving a postcard um but that's because you need to change the address in the dashboard um if you for some reason is it like i should have asked him also if this is a duplicate um you should ask for the the old one to be merged into the new one with business support um yeah there's a, there's a lot of variables to it but I would certainly try and update the original. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else uh, want to add something to that excellent reply? Okay, let's go to, I hope Michael is happy with, with um, uh, his response, Tim. Well, I hope so, because Michael was like, always responding on, on on here so yeah all right that number uh, four is uh, or does the it's titled does the google sandbox restriction still exist today um for new websites uh Faraz ahmed went on to say he said, I did the on-page SEO a month ago and put the content also on the website, but not a single word, uh, a single keyword is on Google except the one keyword, website name. 
Your advice, suggestions, and recommendation needed. Well, there, there was no such thing as a Google sandbox. Um, there was a kind of an e effect, which was um, when things took some time to, to happen. But uh, the, Go the Google sandbox was was a um, was was a a fiction. Um, and uh, it's, I'm surprised that the Google sandbox is still popping up uh, in what you're you're reading. Um, so no, uh, it doesn't exist. It didn't exist then. It doesn't exist now. Um, uh, your so your brand uh, your brand keyword is. Uh, is coming up on Google, so that means that uh, your site has been uh, probably been spidered. Um, I suggest that you need to revisit your content um, without actually seeing the site, um, but it sounds as if you should be getting a little bit more um, evidence of, uh, of ranking, um, but uh, I would probably suggest that you need to to revisit your uh, your content and uh, make it a bit better but uh, i may be being um a bit rude there um having not seen the site um but i hope that answers your question yes thank you uh, yeah, uh, uh, I, I don't know why uh, Faraz, I mean, Faraz is asking a question here. Um, we don't charge um, for our service. Uh, so I think the only appropriate response, uh, if he doesn't like the advice that he uh, is given, um, which is sad, really, too, by the way, because Michael Martin is uh, um, the depth of his knowledge just astounds me um but um yeah uh, i think you know people should uh, if, if they don't agree with the advice they're getting they should just say nothing and and, and uh, go somewhere else um and we, we can organize a refund of uh, all the money they paid um okay yeah, I, I i just uh i just don't want to be rude to people i don't think that's uh I beg your pardon. I said I don't like being rude to people. I, I try to avoid being rude to people uh, unless it's you, Jim. Uh, I yes. make a, a, a big uh, exception in your case. <laughs> okay. All right, let's um, move on. Um, this is number um, five on our run list. Um, um, Another one from Faraz, um, and uh, he said, is keyword cannibalization really bad for SEO? He said that many SEO beginners uh, do make these mistakes. Uh, they target the same keywords on multiple pages in meta tags and content. Um, what is your say on this, and what uh, are your experiences um ps this is my friend's question um who's doing his first um seo project so keyword cannibalization it can happen but look uh, the, the thing is here you typically your supporting content may at times be found more relevant for the actual service or product page. You shouldn't have more top line pages targeting a specific keyword. So you're not you're not going to have a pink fluffy elephant page, right? Top line page, followed by fluffy pink elephant page. You know, on your top line nav followed by elephants that are pink fl pink and fluffy, okay? You're literally gonna have one for that service or whatever product be called pink fluffy elephants. Cannibalization will come in 
when your supporting content is something like uh, the top 10 best pink fluffy elephants, right? And it's super good. It becomes super popular. Um, it's just a cracking bit of content, maybe goes a little bit viral. Then when somebody searches pink fluffy elephants, Google's going to go, hey, they might actually find this also very interesting. And they may, for a time, put that one in and drop your, your original product page. And then the following week, week, switch it around again. And then the following week, switch it around again. And you get a little bit of that to and, to and flowing until Google actually figures out what people are best searching for or want to see better for that particular query. But as you still continue to build up your supporting content, Google will figure out that that one is an article around and it's supporting sort of content around pink fluffy elephants and they get better at figuring out, okay, somebody actually wants a product as opposed to comparing 10 of the best pink fluffy elephants. It does happen, but it's not cannibalization. It's just Google trying to figure out what the user is, it, it is better for the user, okay? Um, so cannibalization in effect is that it will disappear or be gone forever. You literally eat it. It doesn't happen. Um, if you start seeing that a piece of supporting content, because remember I just said you shouldn't have all your pages targeting the same thing because every page should be unique, your top line pages. Um, if it does happen and it sticks for a while, revisit how you can incorporate or how you've actually tied in that supporting content or, or look at bringing in that supporting content into your actual product because it turns out that that's what people want to see first. Look at, um, you know, redoing your main top line page if that's what you want. Um, or look at your supporting content page and see how you can better you know, create calls to action through to that. So, yeah, it does exist, but it's not bad for SEO. You've just got to see what search engines are doing because SEO is about understanding how a search engine perceives a page, how it pushes that page, and then your job is to figure out why it's put it there, look at the other pages and figure out, okay, so we've fucked up on structure here. We need to refix this because Google is finding this more relevant than this and look at the two and understand why. So, yeah. Thank you, Tim. Any others? Um, I, I'd say to defer as uh, I've seen 10 pages uh, in, in a uh, Google search engine results page. 10, 10 uh, um, instances of the same domain in, in, a, in a, the instance where uh, the company might be unique and, and have uh, very uh, um, either no or very few competitors or very uh, suboptimal uh, competitors. Anyway, let's go to the next. Can not using the native WordPress menu hurt the uh, SEO, uh, the search engine optimization? Um, it's from Irina Rinkebeck, and uh, Irina said, hello, I'm the new girl. Uh, he said, I think this could be the right group to ask this question. Um, can not using the native WordPress menu on the website hurt uh, the search engine optimization? Here's the thing. I have a plugin that allows me much more flexibility in styling my menus, but they are not using the native WordPress uh, primary menu for that. Um, just um, imitating the menu uh, um, look um, with the custom modules where you can insert any link you want. So it's not a user experience issue because the user cannot tell the difference, but I wonder if it makes a difference um, for the uh, website crawlers. 
No, it should be fine as long as it doesn't, uh, you know, as long as it's a proper uh, link um, and it takes them to the page that they clicked on uh, without any weird backend stuff. No, it's fine. Um, yeah. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? Okay. Yes, it's that time again. Uh, we've answered uh, all of the questions uh, raised on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group uh, for yet another week. We'll be back uh, at the same time uh, next week to do this uh, all again. But before we go, I must thank um, the, the people who uh, answer questions on uh, the WCA Questions Facebook group uh, throughout the week. Um, people like Brenda Malone, Amon Johns, Michael Martinez, Richard Hearn, Casey Marquis, Rob Watts and Adam Humphreys, to name just some of, of, of the people who make uh, uh, WCA Questions such a valuable resource. And, your content, uh, your your contribution is uh, greatly appreciated. And of course, um, um, uh, I'm very appreciative of Tim Kappa and Masataki Wasa and David Roseanne uh, for fronting up week after week. We're up to episode now 405. Yeah. Yes, and, and, um, I suppose uh, uh, Tim he, he doesn't know how, to, how he doesn't know where to go after, after speaking with us. He he just um, sits there until we we, we knock on his door again. Really, man, I'm like I'm like a Thursday afternoon on the odd occasion when 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 you've been away or you've overslept. I'm like, <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? You know, uh, yeah, it's just a like grab and chainsaw that I don't have. I'm not allowed to have. <laughs> Go and chop down imaginary trees. Can you do have that chainsaw? No, I'm not allowed one, mate. I'm banned. <laughs> okay. Well, well, I mean, it would be a frightening thing, um, with the neighbours encountering you walking around with a chainsaw. Christ, I'd be scared of myself in a chainsaw, man. <laughs> All right. Well, um, as I said before, we will be back um, next week. Uh, but for now, uh, it's uh, well, almost for now, because I can't find the right button. Um, 